Okay guys, if you haven't heard of the Make a Tool Challenge, um, it's a thing going around on, I think mostly YouTube, but it could be also on Facebook. There's several guys doing it. Um, there's several guys I know that are doing it and they have some great videos. Uh, Chris from Science of Diagnostics nominated me to do the next video, so I will show you guys something. Most of the videos out there are on electrical tools, diagnostic tools. We are going to build a mechanical tool today. Not everybody in the industry is doing uh, the electrical diag diagnostic stuff, so we're gonna we're gonna make something that I think 75% of the techs in the industry could benefit from. Now there is a company that makes this tool. Um, I think they used to make one. I had a rough version that I used to use before I even knew that another company made it. So I'm not trying to copy their idea or anything. Um, I think you can buy the tool for 150 ish. I'll have to look up prices again, or you can make it with a piece of scrap metal. So I have an exhaust bender here. You don't have to use this. If you can cut and weld, then you can do it that way. Um, my other one is bent with a mandrel bender because I used a piece of pipe from a, a bumper that I was building and I misbent the pipe and threw it out in the scrap. And then one day I was like, oh, I really need something. And I went and grabbed it and it worked fine. So first we're going to build the tool and then I'll let you guys guess what we're going to use it for. And the reason why I'm building another one is the one that I've been using for years and years, I want a little more length on the bar. So I would like to have a second one. And I'm not sure how well this exhaust bender is gonna bend uh, this type of pipe. I better go a little longer. I can always cut off the extra. But we're not gonna bend this into a 90. We're gonna get close, maybe like a 75 or 80 degree bend. Actually, that's just over 70. I'm gonna call that good. While I have the machine hooked up, I may as well let it hold my material while I cut off this bar. Now, I'll put a link to Chris's video down below. He works on heavy duty equipment, tractors, and some automobiles, but the tool he made was a breakout box for the heavy duty uh, plug-in. Um, I don't know what the J spec is of the tool, but he went all out and drew it all out on graph paper. It was very precise compared to this. This, we're just gonna kind of wing it. This bar here is probably 18 inches. Um, it might be a little long for what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna leave it that length because I don't like the shorter one I have now, which is probably around 10 inches. And then this, we're gonna make longer than that side. So we're gonna go about 24 inches here. And I'm not measuring it, I'm just eyeballing it. And if you guys haven't used a portable bandsaw, these things are awesome. I have the smaller one, which I think is a three inch opening, and then this one that's a five inch opening. And I bought the three inch one originally, and I ran into a couple vehicles, um, some of the bigger Chevy engines and then the diesel engines that I can't cut the exhaust with a three inch one because they're three and a quarter or right at three inch and you're struggling. So I upgraded to this five inch one, took the three inch one home and I just used it around the house and the farm. But this is way faster than a Sawzall. If you can get this unit in there, um, I'd much rather use this than rattle myself to death with a Sawzall. So are there any guesses yet of what we're gonna use this for? Before we get to the next bit, I want you guys to jump down below in the comments and put your guess. I'm sure there'll be some funny ones or inappropriate ones or completely off the wall ones, but take this time to do that. I'm gonna grab a car and pull it in so we can test it. I don't know if I have a car that is faulty enough to, to use this on, but we're gonna try it anyways. Okay, do you guys have a guess yet? Did you put it down below? Because from here out, there's gonna be spoilers. I'm using this Audi because these are one of the most difficult vehicles to, 
check in this sense, but this bar is now going to be your best friend for checking suspension components, especially on control arm vehicles, especially multi-link control arm vehicles. But this will test the ball joints, control arm bushings, um, to an extent the tie rods, wheel bearings, struts, for all sorts of play. And I'll show you how on this Audi. This Audi uses four control arms per side. So it's very hard to find the correct position to load those up and down and get the play to show up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the car and I'm gonna put a pedal depressor in there to lock the brakes. Because in order for this to work, I have to have this tire firmly held by the brakes to the knuckle because we're gonna be exerting a lot of force on all the other components this way. So to depress the pedal, this is a long jawed clamp. I don't know what the technical name is for it. I picked this up at Harbor Freight for like $4. One end on the brake pedal, the other one up against the seat, give it a couple of pumps. I'm gonna start the vehicle and let the vacuum system um, fill up the brake booster. The pedal went down a little bit. I'm gonna give it a few more pumps. We're gonna lift the vehicle up just high enough to fit this bar underneath the tire. And we're gonna do this several different directions, but, and I'm gonna lower it down. And the bar's gonna try and turn on you. That's normal. Cause as the vehicle settles, it's gonna try and just pivot this. Cause this is the only tire that's gonna give since the brake is locked. Now, if you don't have the brake lock, it could potentially try to throw this out or slam it to the ground. Now I'm just gonna take this handle this long handle that I made, which I need to deburr a little bit. There's some sharp edges. And rock it forward and back. Let me move the camera off to the side and you'll be able to see a little better how far this thing's actually moving. And you can go long strokes and it'll actually load some of the other wheels. Now you will get a little bit of clunking. That's normal. And let me zoom in here so you can see the brake pads are going to move in the caliper bracket and you might not be able to see it. It's very slight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in here. There's two control arms mounted right above the tire. I'm just going to grab onto those and feel them. And once I find one that feels like it's clunking or has movement, then we'll see if we can look in there and see it. Now, some play in the bushings is going to be normal, but we're actually getting a clunk out of that one. That means that the, uh, the rubber is probably degraded enough that we're getting metal on metal or close to metal on metal contact. So this is going to simulate acceleration, deceleration, you know, some going over bumps. But what about cornering? Well, we're, let me jack it back up. We're gonna reposition this to load the vehicle like it would be loaded in a corner. Now, you, it will force it to the ground as the vehicle settles, so I just leave it on the ground and then pick up on it. Once you get it back at a 45, let me lower my jack the rest of the way. You can really see how much this is moving the vehicle. If you're getting popping in a wheel bearing or a ball joint, this will often show that. And I actually don't feel anything. A lot of times you can feel it in the bar, but I don't feel anything popping or binding going that direction. So this is an incredibly simple tool. It makes pretty much any suspension checking that you can't check by normal means. Um, sometimes it's easy to grab a guy, have him wiggle a bar underneath there. But if you're doing it by yourself or you have one that's making a popping noise that you just can't find, this will probably give you the leverage to exert forces that you normally couldn't exert on that. Now, is this more than what the vehicle goes under during normal driving? I don't think so. This here is probably a 3,500 pound car. When you take this around a corner at 70 mile an hour, um, it's gonna put a lot more force on that than what we're putting with this bar. When you slam on the brakes on the interstate, it's gonna be a lot more than 
what I can do with this bar as well. And in the tradition of keeping this going and passing it on, I'm going to hand off the video to Corey over at SNA Auto. Make sure you go over there, subscribe. When they come out with our video, you'll be notified. Once their video comes out, I'll try and remember to come back here and link the video down below so you can go straight to that video and we can keep this chain kind of moving along. So that's it. Questions, comments, put those down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you guys have some tools that you've made at home, um, let us know about it. You know, we're, we're mechanics working in the industry. Tools are expensive. There's not always the correct tool for the job. Um, sometimes a homemade tool works way better than the tool that you buy off the tool truck. So if you guys have a tool that you use or that have made, let us know about it. Either put it in the comments below or make a video on it. And that would be completely awesome to, to see what you guys come up with. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.